Okay, I uh, just took a couple seconds to um, tear apart this daffodil uh, carefully. Um, and I didn't use any instruments, any knives or anything like that. I was just able to kind of use my fingers and pull apart um, the receptacle here. And uh, first of all, let's identify everything that we can see on the outside. Uh, we see we know that, that there are petals here and those petals function as like a landing pad or a beacon in the distance for any pollinators that might be out there that's why that's one reason why flowers are so colorful is uh, that um, they tend to kind of glow in the eyes of insects from from far away when insects are looking for pollen to bring back um, and they go from flower to flower to flower so they get pollen all stuck to them and they're able to pollinate we'll look at the specific structure in a second um, so that's we see the petals and there's this one actually has this extra sort of false petal in the middle there that helps the uh, insects to um, focus directly in the middle of the flower where they need to go um, and then down here whoops sorry down there is the sepal this one's all dried up um, and it's a, you know gonna fall off eventually uh, the sepal which helped to protect the flower before it blossomed um, so because when flowers are first emerging from the ground we often have frosts and sometimes even freezes and um, that can make it uh, dangerous for a blossom so those sepals are an extra layer around the flower to protect it from the cold and the, the rain and any other elements that it might have to deal with um, and on the inside, check this out. This one's a really nice specimen. I don't know if you can see, it's hard to do this with one hand, but well, there it is. That's the, you can see it just, it just kind of popped out there. That's the pistil with a stigma right up at the top. You can see the orange false flowers, false petals at the top. And then underneath that is the pistil, that one stalk sort of sticking out with its sticky stigma sticking out of there. That sticky stigma, it's just called a stigma, but I like to use the word sticky as an adjective to remind myself that that's where the pollen that's already stuck on another insect or a bird's beak um, will uh, get stuck to. And then uh, those cells travel, there it is, the, the stigma sticking out here, will travel all the way down here into the ovary, which I've also split open there, um, where um, the, the fertilization actually happens, right there. And um, this is, this, those are not seeds on the inside, they look like seeds, but um, that is where seeds will form. And um, that's, that's the whole purpose of pollination right there, is the fertilization right in there for this plant to reproduce. So um, around that stigma, are all the anthers, which if I open it up, you can see there's three, right in the very center of your screen right now, there's three anthers, and look at all that pollen just pouring off of those things. So that will help get, that will get stuck on the legs of an insect or the beak of a bird, and it will um, travel to another flower to um, find its sticky stigma and um, pollinate and, and fertilize right down there. Okay, so this is my best example because it's a nice big flower. So if you have some big flowers around that you want to, that you have permission from, from parents uh, to tear apart, um, I encourage you to try this out today and see if you can find one uh, and include it in your slide today. If you find a flower to dissect, uh, or two or three, um, uh, apple blossoms are really, really great. Apple blossoms have all the parts that we're looking for. So if you have any crab apple trees or apple trees around that still have blossoms on them, most of mine are gone by, but a number of my apple trees still have living blossoms on them that have not yet been pollinated. So there's that one. Um, I also tore apart one of these bleeding heart flowers. You can see right there. This one has this, those exact same parts. Um, it's a little hard to see the stigma, but there's a one stigma. Actually, it isn't that hard to see. That one thing pointing out that dark dot at the top of this flower is the stigma, and then there are smaller anthers all around it. Some some flowers have a stigma that's much smaller than the than the uh, um, stamen. The stamen is is what holds up the anthers at the end with all that pollen. 
some flowers have a stigma that's smaller than the um, stamen, and other flowers, it's the other way around. This one, it's the other way around. Um, okay, this flower I didn't tear apart um, because you can see almost everything without tearing it apart. Um, right, I don't know if you can see, right down in the center there are all those anthers, those bright yellow anthers. And then in the middle of this flower, right at the end of my thumb tip, you can see a little green dot. I'm going to try to place that right in the center of the screen. A little green dot. You see that green dot as I get, I can't, I can't get much closer than that or it'll get blurry. But that little green dot right there is the stigma. Um, and then, uh, so I was able just to pull one petal aside. Um, if you go down, then you can also see the ovary at the base of the flower as well, being held up by the receptacle. And uh, um, that's, uh, that's my, the third flower that I found. So I encourage you to get out and look for some flowers today. Um, and, and if they're flowers that were planted at home, um, you probably want to get permission from a parent before you pick them and rip them apart. But um, just with your fingers, you know, head outside and look for some flowers that you might find that will have um, some of those flower parts. And sometimes they're on the inside of the flower. So um, these blossoms, I don't remember what they're called. Um, you don't, I don't see much on the outside, but actually if I tear these petals off, I will see the parts that I'm looking for on the inside, okay? So um, there's that. My video's gotten really long now, so I'm gonna stop it. Uh, but have a great day. Everything's up on uh, Google Classroom, and I look forward to seeing you at Hangouts.